So thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I apologize because my French is not so good, so I'm going to do my presentation in Spanish. No, in, in English, sorry. Um, thank you to the organization and to Advent and Rafisoft for bringing me here. Um, so uh, my name is Jorge Benete. Uh, so I'm a Spanish architect, but I, I am based in Hong Kong, where we have um, our office. So Ensign is, is the name of, the, of our office. And we are a design office, but we base our workflows in, in BIM. Um, we are pretty small, but very international. So we have small units in, in, in Madrid, in Dubai, Singapore, and Ho Chi Minh, where we have like one or two people taking care of some projects. And so we are, first of all, designers. Uh, but uh, we have become to be uh, what I think is the future of the architectural profession. We, uh, we do a lot of digital consulting for other firms to, that uh, maybe are not so advanced in, the, in, in computational design or BIM. Um, and then we do a lot of uh, these talks and we move a lot in, in, in many conferences to advocate uh, like this. Like this one? Yeah. Ah, like this. Perfect. Wow. Okay, that's better. <laughs> So yeah, we started a company with a dream of changing uh, as many, I think many of the, the companies uh, that are starting nowadays with changing the, the way that the, 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 our industry uh, works. And, and yeah, so we, we use BIM for design. Um, so most of our projects uh, start in, in design phase. Uh, you can see some of the, of the projects that we've been uh, developing in the last couple of years. So we work from interior design to architecture scale and even master planning. Um, we have projects in that's Kuala Lumpur, uh, Finland, uh, Indonesia, and China. So we, we really work very globally. And, and this is thanks to the, the technology, pretty much. So technology for us is changing. I think it's changing the, the, the game rules. So digital tools are really making it easier for smaller firms like us to, to participate in, in bigger projects and, and, and to become players of, of the international uh, landscape. And in this sense, we, we, we are Archicad users from like 12 years ago. So Archicad is really our, the backbone of our workflow. Uh, we use many different, uh, many different tools like, uh, I don't know, like Rhino, Grasshopper, uh, Twinmotion, or, or optimization tools like Wallacy or, or Galapagos. And, and we operate with uh, other partners that work in, in other softwares like AutoCAD or 3D Max, Revit, and we, we move in, in these ecosystems of softwares. And we, we don't really, so we believe in this open BIM approach. It's, 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 the, it's the best way to actually uh, really work on any project, right? Um, so for instance, like you can see here, we use uh, uh, evolutionary algorithms to uh, sometimes to to uh, explore, explore the um, in design phases, uh, we we use Grasshopper and, and and Rhino to create these responsive systems, uh, you know, like um, buildings and neighborhoods that are responding to their environments and different conditions. Uh, we integrate the environmental analysis, and in this in this sense, uh, for us, uh, Grasshopper and all these tools are are just kind of like satellite tools that fit back always to the BIM model. So the BIM model for us is really the, the core of, the, of our work. So you can see here like uh, using the Grasshopper Rhino connection with Archicad, we can you know, really um, explore in the design phase a lot and then immediately get a lot of detail from, from our model. So this is a little bit of the introduction of our general workflow. And today I'm here to, to talk about the case study, which uh, a competition that we won last year uh, in, in China. It's called the uh, Linear Loop City in Geelong. So Geelong is a relatively small county in, in China. Uh, must be, I don't know, size of half of Spain, maybe. So, uh, and then the, the project here was to create a new city, and a smart city in this area. Uh, it had to be uh, sustainable, environmentally sustainable, economically sustainable, and had to really uh, like bring back uh, the values of these new uh, neighborhoods, right? Or new, these new uh, designs. So we started looking at the different uh, 
different cities and, and like how the cities are grow in, in Europe and in many parts of the world. So we, we have this grid city system and this linear city. Um, and all these are uh, you know like different examples, but we found out that uh, this really didn't really fit with the the area there, the landscape there, and and the culture in, in Asia. So we so this is a picture of the area that we were developing, and uh, our clients that are uh, Japanese, we were teaming up with this Japanese uh, company. So brought us back to us this idea of the, the, the oriental notion of the landscape that's multi-layer you, you, if you have seen like these pictures of the, of the mountains in China or Japan they are always layered right so we came up with the idea of uh, bending the, this idea of the linear city that is like a very old idea right uh, from from the, the 19th century it's you know linear cities are really efficient in terms of communication and 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 all that but but they are you know they grow in one direction so here what we decided is to bend it so use it uh, around the different um, uh, landscape items that we had in the in the in the um, in our plot and then create different loops connected with each other so um, you can see here now, now we the collaboration with this Japanese firm and we were just kind of like trying out different these different loops and because the terrain was very large it was two kilometer by two kilometer we didn't really have an idea of how was the more the, to, the topology and the morphology of this terrain so we created this script in grasshopper that will scan the terrain for us giving us uh, the best areas you can see like the blue area blue blue uh, yellow and, and red areas yeah. and that is giving us an idea of how inclined is the, is the terrain there. So our idea was to, to find the spots where the le least amount of uh, like site work should be made. So therefore trying to uh, conserve the landscape and, and minimize the cost on the, on the project. So uh, this is a simplification of the process. You can see how the, the grasshopper script uh, understands and gives you feedback in terms of the amount of, of square meters that you can build within a range uh, and which is the level in the curves that it's uh, more suitable to, to create uh, to create this loop right this loop road so you can see here how we located the different areas for um, for the, the residents and and how the, these blue dots there are the connection between the, these loops and we were trying to analyzing the, the wind flows and the water flows of the of the site we were trying to get that uh, wind energy and feed, uh, feedback to the city, uh, the energy from these clean sources like wind and, and so on. So that's the result of the master plan. Uh, those are different loops that are connected with each other, and they go around either mountains or lakes and, uh, and different different features. This is another another meeting there in the in the office plan. So bringing back all this information to the B model was really a challenge. So it was it's, it was a huge huge file so we made use of the connection that Archicad has with Rhino. Rhino is a great tool for uh, more like um, uh, landscape and, and road modeling so we model all, all our landscape there and and we always bring back everything to the BIM model so this is the result on the on the Archicad side so these are the the, the, the plans of the, the plan views of the master plan and then uh, one of the challenges that we had is that we needed to provide obviously renders for the for the proposal and also an animation so uh, we we were clueless in that sense because the space was so huge was so difficult to represent uh, and we didn't want to spend a lot of a lot, a lot of time going from you know like still renders to the animation like creating um, abortive work going from one file to another so we found uh, twin motion it's a great tool for uh, like a real-time visualization and these images are like they have Photoshop but they are straight from the to motion animation so and then again once everything was put in place like uh, joining together the Rhino models, Archicad models uh, and, and we, we brought that information back into Archicad to create the different visuals and the different diagrams for the project so all this is is created within Archicad and you can see like different sections. So this would be the the um, low density uh, residence area. 
you can see here like a visual, so it's like a high-tech high but traditional looking uh, Chinese town. Um, and you can see here on the, on the right side the, these loops that are circulated only for, uh, elect by electric cars. So the idea was to keep the, the cars outside this, uh, this city, right? Uh, this is the laser, laser areas where the two loops come together. We created these areas for uh, more like laser activities and, and outdoor activities. But we as well, uh, doing this analysis in Grasshopper, we found that the wind flow here was really strong. So we located as well these, uh, these wind turbines. Um, and you can see here the, the images. So as I said, this is the images coming from the animation uh, animation steels um, from two motion and and this is the the areas where the high density towers would be so creating this the concentrating the the, uh, the density for you know like offices and and like everyday uh, activities and you can see here you know how it's related to the to the field and we wanted really to create like the minimum impact so the towers will dissolve once like obviously this is a conceptual uh, project right but but the towers will dissolve once reaching the ground in, in order to you know keep the uh, the space as clean and as uh, untouched as possible so the last phase of the project uh, as i said was creating this animation um, to explain the process, so we had to go back to, to Rhino to remodel some uh, like an extended area. And you can see the model was really really huge and and quite complex. And at the end, everything came together in this animation. Um, so it was three minute animation. We I'm just showing like a few seconds here, but but the amazing thing is that we really didn't have much time to work on, the, on all this from conception to to you know finalizing the animation was maybe three weeks and and so we didn't have time to 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 lose right and the animation really took no time almost to render like maybe one hour so for us it was really really helpful that we could really send feedback to to our clients in Japan because this project was developed within Hong Kong and Japan so sending back and then we won the first prize uh, you can see us in with the japanese client celebrating uh, drinking sake so so it was a huge huge success and well as final remarks i just want to say that uh, from our experience uh, working in in huge projects bringing technology and design together so we we find that data is a new value for for the architects they really need to understand that we really need to understand how data can really benefit us and, and don't be afraid of understanding more and more about it because it's really, really useful. Uh, it really helps to keep the design uh, in our side. Uh, don't give the, you know, the decision uh, to other parties. Uh, it's not that I have anything against engineers or, or clients, but, but it really helps us to understand what we're doing. The technology really helps in this case, you can, it's, it's very uh, evident how technology helped us understanding the, the site very well and trying to you know, minimize the impact on the, on the landscape, on the culture, and, and so on. And, and really helped us uh, optimizing our time, uh, really helped us to maximize the value of our ideas in the process, not really spending time on uh, very um, tedious tasks like drawing and, and modeling and doing that, but really thinking about ideas and discussions and just something really important I think is that all the companies really need to push this innovation and this research because uh, it's it's today is a nice say, nice uh, thing to say that you're doing research and all that but tomorrow will be a requirement to be able to respond fast and, and to be able to, to be at this level right so thank you so much this is uh, my presentation uh, you can I, I I don't speak very well French, but I, I think we can communicate. I would love to. You know, si vous parlez français, vous comprenez très bien. Un peu. Uh, I would love to discuss more with, with each of you if you have any questions now or later outside. But uh, also you can reach me on 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 my mail or, or Twitter. And yeah, merci. Thank you for your your presentation. Congratulations.